Hello everybody! Once you unlock an iron, you can build the stone buildings. Well, in this video you will learn how to build your first secure small castle that will also serve as a defensive tower. So, let's see what are the features you will find inside when it will be done. The entrance is characterized by some stone stairs connected with the entrance pillar by one wooden floor. This is useful if you want an extra layer of protection during the attacks by just removing the wooden floor. Then at the entrance we have a wooden gate. The internal part will be full of wood because we all know that stone is cold and is hard to warm compared to wood. Plus it is also better looking as well. Inside the first room we have two cooking stations to make some food and a cauldron to make premium food and meat as well. Obviously, we need also a fermenter to process the meat into all the potions we will need. Then, below the stairs you have six reinforced chests for a total storage of 144. The second floor is obviously the bedroom for two people, with a shelf with another fortified chest on top of them that will host all the equipment for the bed owner. The third floor brings us to the defensive tower position that allow you to shoot with your bow in a large radius around it. Plus it obviously needs the machiculations in order to attack anyone trying to destroy the walls from outside. This also means that if you on purpose damage the wooden entrance floor, you can destroy it during the attack in order to prevent your enemies from reaching the main door. On this floor we also have the workbench level 2 needed to repair all your tools, and also the wooden part of the base. While when you decide to expand it and repair your stone component, you have already the stone cutter ready here. To finish, we even have an attic that can be a temporary level 6 forge until you will expand your base. In this room we also have on each side a balcony that you can use as an extra defensive position or just to check the surroundings without getting outside. By destroying the wooden protection you will even be able to get on top of the roof. So let's start the building process. Firstly, I suggest building a 5x1 stone foundation. Surround the first two blocks with the wood walls to create an opened room and on the other side a free tile room. Place on top of each the normal roof to cover them. The smaller can be used to build the workbench, while the bigger the stone cutter and at least two reinforced chests to store all the wood stones and the other material you will use to build the base. Once you bring all the materials uh, and uh, place them inside each chest, it's time to start the building of the base foundation. Start from a stone stairs and in front of it a stone floor and on top of this one another stairs. From the end of the staircase uh, you need to add a wooden floor and underneath at the ground level a stone floor you need as a snapping point to build the entrance pillar made by other two floors. Once done, remove the first floor used as a snapping point. Next step is to use a pillar on one edge of the beginning of the stairs. Follow it by two 4x2 walls and another pillar. From the last one you need to add another two big walls and a pillar. During the process, in case any of your structures will break, this will mean that the terrain is too low, so using the hot tool rise it and try again. Now extend the other sides the same way, until you will have a squared wall. For aesthetic purpose use the hot tool and rise the ground in each section where there is a hole under the wall. Then, in front of the entrance add a 4x2 wall and in the new edge on the right place a temporary pillar that you now can use as a snapping point for a stone floor. Once placed the last one, remove the pillar. And inside the hole extend the floor until you will have two 3x3 foundations. Now add the wood floors on top of the stone one. At this point, in top right corner, destroy the wood and one stone foundation. Then get on the wall side and place back the stone floor 
but this time hold shift and place it at the same level of the wood floor. This is needed to place a campfire on top of it. Then remove the stone floor and place it on the original location that you now can again cover with a wooden floor. This will allow you to have the campfire perfectly on top of the wooden floor. Time to add in each corner the support pillars. Use the two at the entrance to snap a gate, while in the others the normal walls with the cool part towards the inner side. Down this, remove the floor at the entrance and add two small ones attached to the gate, needed as a snapping point for two ladders going up. Once built, replace back the two small floors with the normal one. Next, extend the ladders and add two small floors at its end. Considering you will start to build higher levels and in case you will fall down, you will die, is a good idea to build a temporary bed near the campfire and add a roof on top of it in order to be able to set up the spawn point inside the building. Then remove the roof that you didn't need here anymore. Now that you can die without worrying to come here from the spawn point or another base, it's time to extend the wood post ports that you now can use to build another set of walls all around. For the one on top of the gate you have to use the half wall. We don't want the chimney to have one tile on the next floor. This is why you have to place the floor on top of it and remove the two walls in the edge. Then using the two walls create the small opened room for the chimney in order to force the smoke to get outside laterally. To polish it build a pillar in the middle and some beams on the bottom. It's time to get up and complete the second floor, where you need to leave the space to get upstairs, therefore use two small floors to be able to add another set of ladders going all the way up, at the end of which don't forget to add another two small floors. Time to add the pillars and the walls for the lower part of the floor, and the same for the top side of it. Then cover it with another set of floors. This time here don't add any pillars, but directly the walls and a door outside at the end of the stairs. Then build the corner roof in each edge, the normal one in each side, and to close the gap you have to use a ridge. We didn't build any pillar support and only 2 meters high wall because this section is temporary and needed to protect the rest of the building from the rain. In fact, this is done because you need now to extend the stone walls around, that you need as a support for the rest of the tower. Starting from the entrance, you need to add four pillars on both sides, one for the wall, the second to cover the entrance inside the hall around the wood building. On top of them, you have to place a 2 by one wall that now you can use to place also the stone arc. On one side you can use the auto snapping, while on the other you have to hold the shift button and position it manually. Next step is to add the pillar on the right side and a 4x2 wall between it and the door frame, while on the other side of the entrance add the pillar followed by two walls and another pillar at the end. Repeat this last setup all around. The second layer starts from a pillar, a wall and two small walls for the entrance, while the next side has a normal setup. Pillar, two walls, pillar. For the third side add a wall and now you will reach the chimney smoke escape level. Below both exits add a small 2x1 wall. Then you need two pillars on each side of them, that you have to extend by another level in order to be able to connect the top side with another small wall. For the external part, after the wall add a column, then leave two escape sides opened, while in the corner you have to use three pillars, and finish with the last pillar on the other side of the chimney. To finish this level, add the last normal wall in the gap. The third level is the normal setup on each side. For the last one, in order to reach the entrance you cannot use the normal walls, because it will stick out from the floor once you will cover it with wood. In fact, for this purpose, 
from the previous level, you need to start placing two levels of stone floors. The cool thing about this is that it will fortify the top side and will allow you to build more on the top floor. Now you need to cover the stone with the wood floors. At this point you need to extend the floor for defensive purpose and to create more room upside. To make it easy, place a ladder going up from the margin and a floor on top or side of it. That will allow you to see the wall and use its snapping points easier. Now, using the 26 degree wood beams, place them in each snap point between each stone floors on top side. You won't be able to easily place the one below the stairs, so move them on the side you already finished and place the last beam. This allows you to extend the floor on this side of the building. After you will extend another side, you will be even able to connect them together with a corner floor. Repeat this process all around in order to finish the top floor foundation. Down this, get out, because you have to add an extra support for the corners. To do so, from outside place a ladder in the middle of the wall and you will be able to reach the corner snapping point where you have to add another 26 degree beam with the two colleagues inclination toward its side. This beam will be floating, so you need to place another one in order to get to the wall. Repeat this process in each corner. Then after you are done, don't forget to remove the ladders you used for this purpose. Time to get back to the top floor, where you have to place in each corner of the extension a 2 meter pillar. Then, on the bottom side of it, add the half floors all around, that you now can use in order to add the pillars in the corners that won't snap without the walls. Now you need to extend each pillar by another meter, that you now can use in order to place the next half wall leaving a small observation and bow shooting hole. On top of them you have to add also the beams all around needed as support for the roof. The next step is to build 26 degree beams going out from each support towards the center that you have to connect together through the normal beams. This allows you to place the first roof section easily and support it at the same time. In the corners you need to use a corner version while in the sides the normal one. Done this, it's time to extend again the roof supports and place the same way the roof but this time using the 45 degree one in order to have enough space for the attic. For the last roof part that also has to be under 45 degree, you have to patch the central hall that you can do with a bridge roof and hide it behind the floor. Now that we connected the roof, there is a little problem to fix. Characterized by the fact that you can shoot and see in the distance, but you cannot see the base of the tower to defend it in case of an attack. To solve this problem, replace all the extension floor with the two small one connected to the external part. But now you can see that this hole is enough to fall down and die. To prevent this from happening, you need to add the beams on the external edge while well, in the angles you have to use the 1 meter one. And repeat this process in the internal edge as well. To finish, add the small beams on top of the supports. You will notice that in this way you cannot fall anymore, but in the corners there is a little mess that prevents you from using it or shooting with the bow. This is why I suggest you cover it uh, with a small floor and use it to build some torches on top of them as a floor illumination. Now, if you look at the tower from outside, it is slightly weird that on top you have the beam support while on the bottom you don't. So for aesthetic purpose I suggest you to add them. Now that the main roof is up, you don't need any more the structure in the middle on the top floor. So, remove it, then add the classical small floors in order to place here the stairs going up inside the attic, from which you can now build the floor but leave the space for the stairs passage. But still you can add the small floors on the edge without blocking the entrance. 
Next step is to destroy any central roof and its top support in order to be able to get outside, from where you can finally add the cross for the central roof ridge. Once done, you don't have to patch the roof, but instead use the 26 degree one placed it going up, build around it the beam supports and now you have a cool looking window for the attic. To polish it and prevent someone falling down, add a half wall on the bottom side and two small pillars on its sides. Repeat this process in each attic side. The main structure is done and it is time for the furniture and the room's organization. On the first floor, the space below the stairs is perfect for three reinforced chests. Then, on top of the last two, you can add a floor using the side walls as a snapping point. To place it properly, while holding the shift button, disable the automatic snapping, this way you can hide the bottom wooden log inside the chest. This creates a shelf for another two chest you can add on top of it without clipping through the stairs. Now remove the top side of the stairs, this way you can add on top of the last chest two small walls as support for another one. Then place back the stairs. As a result, you have your main storage and you can finally move what's left outside into the building. Now, going on the next floor, you can add two beds on the sides of the room, but this will feel as if they are connected one to the other. This is why you can add a half wall as a separator between them. Now, you need some room for your equipment. This is why you can add two small floors on top of each bed that you can use in order to place the chest here. At this point that you have the beds in the right location, you can set the spawn point upside and remove the bed in the previous floor, where you can add at the margins of the campfire to cooking station, leaving the space for the cauldron. But to place it and the sconces as illumination, you need to build a forge first. This means that it is time to go inside the attic and place it there. Then go back and add the cauldron on top of the campfire. Probably you will also want to be able to ferment your mead made with it. This is why you can use the other corners of the room for the fermenter. And to finish this room between the fermenter and the door, add the scones to illuminate better the place. Build them also on the next floor in the middle of the walls near the stairs. Plus get outside and add two at the entrance to recognize easier the entrance side. Time for the third floor, where you have to add the walls on the internal part of the stairs and a separate on one side that will result in a small and a large opened room. Done this, it's time to get out and destroy the stone cutter and the workbench and all the structure you build to protect them. Then move the two stations inside. On the smaller part, place the stone cutter, this way you can expand your building later on. While on the other side, the workbench and at least the tiny rack in order to increase its level to the second, required to repair the biggest part of equipment and tools. While in the attic, you have enough space to get the forge till the level 6. Considering you need it to get the best equipment, repair and upgrade, it is better to have it as high as possible. To finish, you can build the two torches in front of the forge to add some lights in the room for the nights.